In the 1970s, America was shocked by the oil crisis. Americans faced substantial petroleum shortages and prices were rising every day. The inventor named Stanley Meyer saw the opportunity in the crisis and decided to create a device that would end dependence on fossil fuels. He succeeded and was ready for production, but he had become a threat to the entire energy industry. I think there's a strong possibility that we're at a turning point in history, a complete revolution in human affairs with the discovery of totally new energy sources. Stanley Meyer was an independent inventor who had more than 200,000 patent applications in his lifetime. He was the owner of many different patents covering various industries including banking, oceanography, and even heart monitoring. He also worked for NASA's Gemini space program and won the Best Inventor Award in 1993. However, Stanley Meyer's most famous invention was his car which ran on water. His focus on water as a fuel began in 1975, a year after the end of the Arab oil embargo, which had triggered high gas prices, gas pump lines, and anxiety. It became imperative that we must try to bring in an alternate fuel source and do it very quickly. He designed and built a motor that ran completely on water, mounting it onto a dune buggy painted with the conspicuous writing, Water-Powered Car. His revolutionary car was recorded many times on film and television. He stated that only 22 gallons of water were required to travel from Los Angeles to New York. Meyer's device was simply groundbreaking. Its concept is that the atomic composition of water makes it a perfect fuel source. After years of research, Meyer's discovered a workable method of onboard hydrogen electrolysis creating a motor that performed at an efficiency of 100 miles per gallon of water. It involved a small box that used a process called a water fuel cell to split water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen. The hydrogen was then used to power his car while the oxygen was released through the exhaust pipes. It produced no emissions, making it an environmentally friendly alternative to traditional fossil fuels. If the device worked as specified, it would violate both the first and second laws of thermodynamics, allowing operation as a perpetual motion machine. Many people do not realize that when you run a car truck on gasoline or diesel fuel, you're actually running it on hydrogen. And all we're doing is using the hydrogen from water, safest gas on the planet, because there are no fumes. And under the National Bureau of Standards figures shows that when you use water, the energy release is roughly two and a half times more powerful than that of gasoline. So water is a very powerful fuel. But as soon as Meyer began showcasing his invention to the public, strange things began to happen. He received mysterious phone calls and was followed by unknown individuals. He claimed he was threatened by large energy corporations who saw Meyer's invention as a threat to their profits. Despite the threats, Meyer continued to work on his invention, refining it and making it more efficient. He even started getting offers from investors who were interested in his technology. And many, many times over the last decade, uh, I have been offered enormous amounts of money to simply sell out or to sit on it. The Arabs offered me well over a billion dollars cold cash simply to sit on and do absolutely nothing with it. But then, in 1998, tragedy struck. While dining with his brother and two Belgian investors, he took a sip of cranberry juice and suddenly grabbed his throat and ran out of the restaurant, screaming that he had been poisoned. He officially died of natural causes due to high blood pressure and cerebrovascular disorder, but is widely believed to have been murdered. If Stephen Meyer was shocked at his twin brother's collapse and death, he was equally amazed at the Belgian's response the next day. I told him that Stan had died, and they never said a word, he recalled. Absolutely nothing. No condolences, no questions. I never ever had the trust of those two men ever again. Stephen Meyer claimed that one week after Stanley's death, unidentified people had stolen the dune buggy from Stanley's garage, along with all of the inventor's instruments. Meyer's patents have expired. His inventions are now in the public domain, available for all to use without restriction or royalty payment. 
Some of his drawings have survived, but he probably left out some important things needed to build a water-powered car. No engine or vehicle manufacturer has incorporated Meyer's work. I think the, what, what happened was that his patents could not be replicated because he left out some important parts. So the patent was used to publish enough to protect his technology, but not to give it out. You can't just uh, implement it out of the, what he did. It seems that in 2014, and therefore some 16 years after the death of Stanley, the vehicle turned up in Canada, perhaps sold by his brother Stephen, now under the ownership of the Holbrook family, which claim to be old associates of Stanley, but nothing is known of it after that date. Because our economy is based on the automobile and the gasoline it uses, all these inventors who come up with a better idea are never allowed to get their invention onto the market. Of course, you will never get anyone to admit that inventions can be suppressed, but nevertheless they do. Meyer's invention drew worldwide attention and sparked interest from investors and government agencies. But in the years following his death, his invention has remained largely forgotten by the mainstream media, and the technology behind it has yet to be fully explored. But some believe that Meyer's water fuel cell was the key to a sustainable future and a better world. Thank you for watching. You can support us by subscribing to the channel. Also, check out our other videos.